24 on EA Sports. And we've got the Vikings superstar running back. He was an unstoppable force last week with well over 200 yards. It's the Vikings and the Packers coming up next. This is such a special place. You drive through the streets of Green Bay, no tall buildings, quaint houses, and then boom, right there in the middle of the neighborhood is iconic Lambeau Field. Today we've got a Week 8 matchup on tap here as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Green Bay Packers. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Packer team as we interplay here. They come in losers of two straight, so they're trying to right the ship here a little bit. They're teetering a little bit, aren't they? And now things could really go south if they lose this game, so they understand the importance of playing well and stopping this streak. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the Vikings, they can't be any better as we hit the halfway mark. A Lurching closer toward the midway point of this NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. Taken at the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And a look at a guy, definitely got a little razzle-dazzle to him. Can do it with his arm or his legs. They're mobile QB. And I think if you ask most folks to give you their first half MVP, very likely they're going to say it's this man right here. The NFL's leader in touchdown passes to this point in the season. Still two months to go, but if he can keep going to the pace he's at, this is going to be a dangerous team come January, and he could very well walk away with the MVP. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. They'll look to throw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Darnell Savage, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Ben, I wonder if someone's down there checking on the head coach right now because he might be in a little bit of shock after what just transpired. Instead of a lengthy opening drive to deal with, his guy stepped up and stole that drive away. Momentum on their side now. How will they attack on offense? So here are the new look Packers set to go to work. And at the helm here in 2023, a lot of eyes on this man in his fourth NFL season, Jordan Love. I love this quote during the week. If I were a defensive back, I would have wanted to play against me last week as well. <laughs> He's trying to eliminate those turnovers, those interceptions, and get back on the positive side of the ledger throwing touchdown passes. Yeah, had four of those picks led to the loss. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. The numbers on the ground for Jones last week. 16 carries, 63 yards. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much the legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. Talking into a pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Off the play fake, Love. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. So 0 for 2 throwing the football and a very quick 3 and out to start the game. Look, stats are going to be decided as the game goes on, but bottom line is that's not the quick start that every team looks for when they begin a game. Well, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Booked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Vikings are going to get the ball back on the turnover as they hold on fourth down. It's almost like you can see the look of frustration on his face. Four interceptions last week. We talked about it all week. What did he do wrong? And another one here in the first half. And you can understand the frustration. You actually feel his pain a little bit. But the worst thing he can do is what you're seeing right now, showing the other team that he's frustrated. All they're going to do is double their efforts to make him even more frustrated. He's got to gather himself, compose himself, and keep fighting. Well, he talked a lot about erasing that loss last week, getting back in the win column. We'll see how he responds. They take a shot downfield there, but it winds up falling incomplete. Here's second and 10. So Charles, you know, offensively, this group really playing at a high level. 7-0. 
And we're still a long ways from discussing a potential unbeaten season. He's got a man complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 29 yards, first down. And that's how you shake off the interception you threw on the opening drive, come back and throw another strike and gain nice yardage. And I give credit to two people on this one. The man throwing the ball and the person calling the plays. They're not shutting him down early in this game. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Throw left side, complete to Moss. So the completion good for six yards. And it's second down. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. A tough adjustment to the NFL throughout this rookie season. And his problem with turnovers is only exacerbated by his early showing today. That's a couple for him here in this first half. And he's cleared the double-digit mark for the entire season. The Packers offense here coming back out for their second drive. They'll start in excellent field position following the INT. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Following the interception, Love. And that is incomplete. Wow, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. Love going to give this one to Jones. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Yeah, look at this defense for the Vikings. Well, they've been pretty much a mess against the pass number 31 in the league. Take those rankings, throw them right out the window. <laughs> and the pressure gets to Love, and he'll go down. That sack by Tremaine Edmonds. They said there was a lot of discussion in their defensive team meeting room after last week's performance. They had seven sacks. Something in the water. There's one in the first quarter. A lot of discussion, a lot of excitement because now everyone wants to get involved with this. Who's going to continue that process? Who's going to get to the quarterback this week? But they have to be careful. When you have that much pressure, they want to use it against you. Draws, screens, those types of plays. We'll see if they do that. Just a two-yard return there following a punt of 48. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively. Obviously, two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. From the 22, here's second and eight. There they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And not much doing there. Maybe a yard up to the 23. Back-to-back -back runs. I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I know this offense was expecting to do big things, but it certainly hasn't turned out that way, at least not through the first three drives. They're definitely going to have to put their heads together and start concocting some offense that will move the ball downfield. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. That's taken on the 25. Personal foul. Roughing the kicker. Defense. And that hurts. If it was running into the kicker, wouldn't be a first down. Roughing, it is a first. And just think about the differences between the two. Running into the kicker almost feels inadvertent, just a small tap, so to speak. But when you rough him, here's your bodies are hitting the ground and flying all different places. And the difference is five yards or 15. And in this case, that's a big play. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. Second down at six now from the 42. On play action, they'll throw. And he fires one incomplete. He was trying to find his tight end, Josh Oliver. And it's third down. A 
again he'll drop the throw. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Devondre Campbell, the linebacker, picks it. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in his ball game. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How things turn out for him? I think okay. He's a guy in all the commercials now. <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. And a good push up front, and he's able to navigate his way down inside the 30. 11 yards and a Green Bay Packer first down. Love. Short pass to Howard. He's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Just need a yard here. Second and one. At the Vikings 20-yard line. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They go backwards there two yards, and second and one is now third and three. It's now third down and three. To throw now. Here's Love. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up four. A 46-yard attempt. Marr able to put this one through. And the Packers are off to a 3-0 lead. Well, they're able to come away with the interception, Charles. They aren't able to move the ball all that much. However, they do get three out of it with a field goal. Yeah, and anytime you do force a turnover, you have to come out of it with points. Everybody wants six. They'll take the three there. Now it's their opportunity to do it again. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And now out comes Minnesota. And they are trying to create some separation within the division. And look, CD, I know that this is still the first half of the season, but this is a big matchup no matter where it falls because these are the top two teams right now in that division. And if you can build a bit of a cushion as you head towards the second part of the season, that allows you to survive the expected injuries, potential upset losses, all of those things, and still be in good shape. Second down and eight. They'll look to throw here. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he backs it away. Falls down and complete. I came into this game eager to see how they would hold up the man coverage. And on that play, they held up quite well. So on fourth down, Ryan Wright on the punt for Minnesota. And we'll see what he can do on the return. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return. And it'll be Packer football here, first down and 10. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trotting back out. Those are his numbers through roughly the first half of the season. And given that, you'd have to think he's on pace for a 1,000-yard campaign. Steady as he goes, steady goes the offense. But you know what else is happening, too, because they are a team now recognized with the ability to run the football. You've got to be able to throw better now, right? Better throwing lanes, better opportunities for the guys downfield, maybe more one-on-one -on -one coverage, which you should be able to beat easier. Yeah, he's establishing not just a tone, but an identity for his team. And that's a discussion we had a couple days ago in the team meetings, talking about this running game opening up the passing game. We'll see if that continues to happen. Now a first down carry by Jones. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. Again, it's Jones. And this may be a carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and 10. Throwing. Love. Pass taken in by his 
big tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. Well, there wasn't much of a window there, Charles. Had to deal with a couple of defenders, but able to find his big tight end. And, partner, we know double coverage is a challenge for any player to try to defeat. But maybe it's a little easier if you're one of those big tight ends because you have a size advantage on just about anyone trying to cover you, and you use your body to create some space. Up the middle, Jones. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. This defense for the Vikings, they were excellent in that win over the 49ers last week. And the way they did it was by getting after the quarterback. Sacked him seven times in that game. Came from all angles, created a lot of illusions, and especially just beat them man for man. That's the kind of defense that really frustrates an opponent. Two yards on the pickup there. Third and seven now. Here's Love. Throw right side caught by O.J. Howard. They got a yard on first, two on second, and three here on third. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they've rallied and made the tackle. The kick by Marr is good. And that will make it six to nothing. A good start for him in this one here in the first quarter, and he's now two for two on field goals. And I know while the offensive coaches are telling their guys, hey, let's leave the kicker out of it unless it's an extra point, this could pay dividends if this game is tight down the stretch. His confidence is going to be sky high if they need him for a big-time kick. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Now whistles and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Second and three. He's got Hawkinson. It'll be a gain of just a yard. And now that sets up third and two. And yeah, come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. Now a play fake here on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Six-nothing our score after one. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter. As they've got it with second down and less than a yard. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. Ten yards, and it's good for a Viking first down. First down, Minnesota. And they'll give him another shot here on the ground. Stiff armed him. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. So from the 37, here's second down and one. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Rookie quarterback, rookie running back. They team up there to pick up the first. They'll fake it on the jet sweep, and instead, a handoff up the middle. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Second and five. A gain of five brings up second and five at the Packers' 24-yard line. They'll drop to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Moss. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. He'll look to throw. And he's wrapped up. Taken down. Back at the 25. We're 
Sean Gary that time fighting free and getting to the quarterback. Gary was proving his 2021 was no fluke. Had six sacks in nine games before a torn ACL ended his 2022 early. Looks like he's back in full form with plays like that. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Jefferson moving in motion left. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yes, yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They're giving him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. And his kick is good. And they are on the board, trailing now at 6-3. to three. So if you like field goals, you've come to the right spot. We've had three so far. But this is a football game, right? It is. How you like that one, huh? You like where I went with that? How about that one? I like it. Okay, but hey, let's face it. In this game right now, both defenses have responded well. They're trying to hold the line on this. You just wonder if anyone can break through with a touchdown and put some pressure on their opposition. Green Bay returning on offense, led by running back Aaron Jones. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. On second down, it's Jones. And he'll be stopped up at the 26 after a gain of only a couple. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Yeah, that's a nice job there defensively to blank of those receivers on third down. And as a quarterback, all you can do is just lop one toward the bench. Not too close, mind you and live to punt the football. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And out now come the Vikings. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side. Maybe a little gas. Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting up field and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. But he comes back with one complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They'll look to throw here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Finding Hawkinson here on the out route. And he goes out of bounds. It looks like right at the 50. The Vikings on third down. Just one for five to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Coverage is awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And here's Ryan right now. They'll boot it away from about his 35. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. Here's Aaron Jones in the offense trying back out. He's hoping to get it going. They're hoping to get him going, too. You know, he's about ready to pop one here in the second quarter. He's hoping. And his offensive line teammates, they want to get one of those, too, because 
They want to continue to run the football. Most offensive linemen like that part of the game better than pass protection because they're not taking blows, they're actually dealing them out. So what they want to do is show the coaches, hey, if we pop one, we're having success. That way they won't go away from the running game. He'll be hoping to pop one, break one here this go around. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. They just keep trying, but so far, finding no room for him to run. Now, none whatsoever. In fact, you run the numbers. He's under three yards a carry at the moment. He's got his target. That's complete. He's to the 15. Touchdown, Packers! Christian Watson, his third touchdown now on the year. and it works to hit the end zone. And it's really not a surprise to me. That's a throwing down in the NFL because of how tough it is to run the football. But what offenses like to do is still show and run formations to make them respect it and throw out of those. In this case, they took a nice shot at the end zone and made it pay off. An extra point by Moore, up and good. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Following the touchdown, here's Moore to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. They're in a 13-3 hole here now as they come up on first down. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Another good run there for a guy who, remember, on Wednesday was named NFC Offensive Player of the Week for what he did a week ago. Yeah, and you know it takes some solid runs and some extra special ones in order to win that type of an award. I think he's locked in and wants to get it done a second time. Meanwhile, the throw here is complete, and he goes out right around the 39. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll try and run this one right up the gun. The quarterback, it's Logan Ryan who brings him down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300 plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. After a gain of five, they'll wind up being about a length of the football short here on third down. Here's a handoff out of the gun. And he gets it down to the 48, enough for the first. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. There are a lot of different formulas to winning football, but one constant over the years, winning on third down. That pickup there was big because they had struggled throughout this one. Pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. This is second and eight. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And it's incomplete. Well, this is a half for not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers' 26. 21 yards there on third down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. They'll look to throw now on first down. Now throw right side here, going to be incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. What would look like a march to the end zone has hit a momentary roadblock for that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And this is an offense in need of getting a few good things to happen. Here's one right here. They've had their share of struggles in key moments, but that's a nice throw and nice work after the throw. And they're set up now with a first and goal. They'll set up to run the quarterback draw. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Second and goal from the six this time. He'll look to throw. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. This defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. They've disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into air and throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down. Just inside the 20 and the 19. The Packers are going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him and with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Green Bay returning on offense, led by running back Aaron Jones. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. Give them five on the screen play, and that'll set up the third down. Boy, that was certainly well read defensively, and the key to any screen play is space to work, and there was none to be found there, and they tackle him for just a short game. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. On first and 10, Love. Right side to Watson. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Now a second and two. Love looking to throw it. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. Pass the 20. Five. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Well, this secondary just continues to be a force. Multiple interceptions in this game, and now the pick six. And the thing about it is once you get an interception as a unit, you think to yourself, okay, we got that. How do we increase it the next time? Get the interception, do a little more damage, and there's your outcome right there. Take it to the house and break down what they're trying to do offensively. Point after, right down the middle. And that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Packer offense heading back for one final first half drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And Jones with a nice burst there on first down as he'll be taken down, but not before a gain of seven yards. They'll keep it on the ground again here. 
And he's going to have a first down, but not sure it'll matter as the clock will continue to run. So we come upon halftime with a tie score, 13 all. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Hi again, everybody. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the league here in the unofficial midway point, week eight of the NFL season. We'll begin up at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. And it's the Texans out in front as that one is just about to halftime. Tank Dell, a touchdown reception. From there, let's head to AT&T Stadium as we check out the Cowboys at home in Dallas. And they have the lead in that one over the visiting LA Rams. Michael Gallup, two touchdown catches on the afternoon. Finally, let's get to Indianapolis check on the Colts at home at Lucas Oil Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Saints in that one. The Saints trying to finish that one off and claim victory. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Here's the Packers offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. It's a tied football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. It's a loss of four on the first down play. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Love. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, but it's going to lead to third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Love. And the throw there going to be incomplete. And so many times we look at the opening drive of the third quarter as a tone setter, and many coaches do emphasize it, and that's a strong performance there defensively to force incompletion and, more importantly, force a quick punting situation. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return, and the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. We have not seen much on offense here from either side these last few drives. We've hit a wall, so to speak. And hit it hard, haven't we? Because the defenses right now, they seem to be a step ahead, don't they? Beating them to the point of attack, beating them to the punch. These offensive guys are tinkering like crazy. What's it going to take to get back on track? Yeah, both sides searching for adjustments. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Tall task ahead of him here, needing a full 15 yards to move the chains. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. And he'll get credit for putting him inside the 20 as the fair catch is made right at about the 19-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? 
And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Ray Carter's number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. Takes it to about the 37. It may be only a gain of three yards, but that back, he deserves a lot more credit on the play. That could have easily been stopped at the line, but his vision and his determination found some space to turn it into that modest gain. And a second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. On third down, Love. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he's going to have the Packers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. Quickly out wide, this is Watson. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A good pick up there, 21 yards. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes it under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. It'll be a loss of seven on the sack, and it brings up second. Love, they go play action now. He finds his man complete. That's Reed. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it's going to be third down and a ways to go here. Third and 14. Third and 14. Now Love. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Viking 17-yard line. A big play there as they get the conversion on third and 13. And this offense can get their tight ends involved. They can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Throwing. Love. Packers are going to be set up for the first and goal on a pass play that moves him all the way down to the one. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. And he's going to be intercepted for the third time thus far. Picked up by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And the Vikings are going to have it here as they'll start at their own seven. That's now a second interception in as many weeks from his linebacker position. And think about all the different techniques he has to employ in a passing situation. Is he spot dropping because it's zone? Is he picking up man to man? Is he having to run with a running back or a tight end? In any event, great eyes, head on a swivel, and excellent hands. Yeah, versatility and showing those hands. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Here's second and seven. And they'll keep leaning on the running game. Back to the ground. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 76 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. On first down, he'll drop to throw. That's going to be caught by Moss. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Another good gain. That's now 35 yards combined on those last two plays. to throw now on first down. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. 
Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and four. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. This one brought in by Jefferson. And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he'll take this down inside the 45. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And this is going to fall to the ground incomplete. That very nearly their fourth pick of the game. Instead, second down. They'll look to throw again. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Again, he'll drop to throw. And that will be incomplete. Sometimes the game is pretty simple. Put a few extra defensive backs on the field, give them nowhere to throw the football, force the incompletion, and get off the field on third down. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? At the nine-yard line. Now a second down throw for Love here. Short pass to Howard. Short completion, just four yards. Third and seven now. It's a game of four. Makes it third and seven. Play action this time with Love. Throwing left sideline there, but it's incomplete. That is certainly one way to frustrate a quarterback. One of those extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. On is the punt team now as this one sent away. And a fair catch taken here right at about the 40-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball first and 10. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. All defense is worried that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam coming out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal game. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. to throw here. And this one right back into the hands of Jefferson. And they're able to stop him short. On third and six, they'll only pick up four. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and ten. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Second down, another shot for Jones. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. They'll come up now, third and three. It's third down and four. They'll try and run for it with Jones. 
And he's going to have a Packers first down. It won't be by much. He needed three, and he got three, barely. But the mark shows first down. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. And he got blown up on that play back at the 20. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. At the 20-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. An inside give to Jones. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. A loss of one, now a loss of two, and they're staring at a third and 13. Not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Third and long for Love. And that is incomplete. The offenses are always trying to be smart about when they're trying to dial up a screen to the running back because they understand you can only go to the well so many times in a game without the defense starting to anticipate the call. And the punt team on now as this one's sent away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Rookie to rookie on the hook up there, and it's a first down. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. They'll look to throw now on first down. And incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. to throw here and incomplete on the deep ball had the right idea they were trying to throw it to the sideline but he let it just a little bit too much trying to get it out to his receiver ends up falling to the ground incomplete back to throw again and it is caught and he goes down but not before getting this inside the 25 well, that's one way to convert on third down, picking up 26 yards. I think it all came together there in breaking route, drove it with excellent pace, money throw right there to move the sticks. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And they're knocking on the door now. There's a good run there. Going to take this to about the 10-yard line. 89 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. A field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. He'll look to throw. And it's caught. A gain of seven that time. Second goal. A gain of seven brings up second and goal at the two-yard line. They'll try to run this one in. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal from the two or the three in that area. What do you dial up? Something quick hitting. You don't have the time for something that develops slowly. It's got and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. A great play there. His seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Vikings have broken this deadlock and have taken the lead here in the fourth.
And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends are on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Another drive coming up for this Packers offense. The pressure is on now. They're being shut out here in the second half after a decent first half offensively. And they need their best drive of the game right here. First down going to the air with Love. Got his man. It's Bo Melton. And he's upended at the 33 following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. And two at the 33 yard line. Love looking to throw it. Oh, he had a man open. He overshot him. It's incomplete. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. To pass, here's Jordan Love. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers and forced the incompletion. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. So here are the Vikings to take over. They've got the lead right now, and remember, they are riding that very impressive seven-game winning streak, trying to push it to eight. They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got his tight end over the middle. T.J. Hawkinson, 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Well, how about this aggressive approach? Got the lead, fourth quarter, continuing to throw the football. Are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. They'll look to throw here on first down. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy on the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about, in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice safe throw, and a good one. Seven catches for him now, and this last one, a first down. One back in the backfield, he'll get the carry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Eight yards on the pickup brings up second and two. Back to throw. And when you're in a one-score game in the second half, now's not the time to force the football to places where you shouldn't. And that's a smart decision to just get that one out of there. Jefferson moving in motion left. Now fake on the jet sweep. And they'll instead run up the middle. And he will have a Vikings first down as they get five there on third and two. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yards. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. They could not contain Kenny Clark as he gets home for the sack. Steady, steady, steady. That's Kenny Clark. And then there's those flashes as we just saw there as he gets to the quarterback. You can always rely on him to hold down the defensive front for the Green Bay Packers. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And that's going to be incomplete. 
Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Looking to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Vikings. A great effort there. 32 yards. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. They have to love seeing that from their young quarterback here in the fourth quarter, able to further that lead with a touchdown pass. He didn't go turtle, did he? And you know what I mean by that. I had an old coach used to say all the time, hey, when we have a lead late, don't just tuck in and try and ride it out. Go out and play and extend the lead. And that's what he did. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. Packers all set to go again. That means we'll see Christian Watson. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. Now Love. And his throw is incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Sauce Gardner able to get him down for a loss of 11. And it brings up fourth down. Oh, you can just see it in their body language. They're starting to see victory on the horizon now. And if it comes to fruition, they got to give a game ball to the front seven. Defensive line has taken charge and controlled this game. Face a challenge of stopping this opposing offense, and they've done so with ease. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by A.J. Terrell. And he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Yet another interception, and I just had to double-check my math. But it is now eight between last week and this week. Well, I just used the calculator. I didn't worry about <laughs> double-checking it. But the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it, and sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it, and that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Throwing middle, and it's complete. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. six-yard pickup brings up second and four at the 12-yard line. Now a handoff looking right. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Touchdown, Vikings! nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are poised to move to 8-0 as they extend their lead even further. He has really settled in throwing the football, and that touchdown here in the fourth quarter gives him a pretty comfortable cushion. He may be a rookie, but he's playing like fourth quarter, and the QB is easy. How about this guy? Youngster, not worried about anything, just cutting it loose and having fun. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. And they unfortunately are staring at a mini losing streak developing, trailing here in the fourth quarter. This would be their third straight defeat. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And his guys will take over 
at the 30-yard line. Well, there's two sides to this coin. I mean, on one side, five interceptions now thrown for him. That's tough, but man, this defense, they have been ball hawking and impressive. But Charles, let's flip it back over. If you're coaching a quarterback that's struggling this much at this stage of the game, do you maybe try to get him out? I would think about it, and I think about it awfully hard, but also, you might want to look into his eyes, see what he has. He might be one of those players that you don't want to affect his confidence by actually pulling him out of the game. So you have to know your player. You have to know the situation. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. That'll back them up two yards and also bring up fourth. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but they'll take the three and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clipped him off in your headset so you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. Now, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. Yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Give that sack to Harrison Phillips, the big man. Second down, love. And he's just throwing the ball up for grabs now. Fortunately, that one going to fall incomplete. Now they'll work with four receivers here on third down and long. Love. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Now it looks like we'll get a timeout, and we will. We've got an injured Packer on the field. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. On now is the Packers punter as he's on to kick it away. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Well, this was a very close ball game at halftime, Charles, but in the second half, that offense kind of kicked things into another gear, and they were able to pull away for the victory. And Brandon, I think they're the type of team that just looked at the mirror and said, hey, ton of pressure on, but we're the type of team that can flat out handle it. They stood up, stood up with confidence, and made it happen for a victory. So for Minnesota, they continue to cruise as they move to 8-0 now on the campaign. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Atlanta to take on the Falcons.
Meanwhile, for the Packers, they fall a game under the 500 mark at three and four through seven games. And they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.